The Jimquisition last featured virtual reality in the episode VR Troopers back in January, where we talked about the people who were determined to see VR fail, and the people who were determined to see VR succeed. I said I was taking a wait and see approach, I waited, I saw, and I'm not impressed. At all. By VR. So, today we're doing a follow-up where I discuss my thoughts about virtual reality and why I think it's not necessarily doomed to failure, but certainly not destined for greatness, because VR is kind of snake oil at this point, not to mention just a stealth return of motion control. So let's look at the problems facing VR and why I think it's kind of toss. Everybody's got VR fever. At least that's what you'd think if you believed the creepily evangelical believers who declare it to be the future of video games. What is it with tech bloggers anyway? Everything's either dead or the future for them. Shit can't just exist. Anyway, virtual reality is the latest big thing people keep blowing like it's cock squirts liquor, and so many of its heralds seem oblivious to its many problems. The problems that will ensure VR remains outside the mainstream and will, in all likelihood, join 3D TV, motion control, and Tazos in the realm of promising technology that was thrust into our faces rapidly before getting dropped and left to die quietly in the street. First of all, VR is extremely prohibitive technology with a ton of barriers to entry. Price is of course a huge factor. This shit's expensive, with the PlayStation VR costing $400, the Oculus Rift costing $600, and the HTC Vive costing fucking $800. This is basic pricing too, not counting the fact you'll need other shit to go with it. The PSVR naturally needs a PS4, alongside a PlayStation camera and two six-year-old move controllers that Sony has the shitting nerve to sell in 100 buck two pounds. The Oculus and Vive require high-end PCs to handle their flavour, meaning whatever option you go with, you're gonna need expensive hardware on top of the expensive hardware. Next to price, the physical barriers to entry are equally restrictive and shut a lot of people out, and this is something so many VR troopers don't talk about. Those with physical disabilities might as well not bother with a Vive, given its propensity for standing and room-scale games. As someone with a herniated disc, my Vive basically takes up floor space, since so many of its games require standing and twisting around. And that's a temporary issue for me. There are many for whom it's simply never gonna happen. There's stuff that will never just get better. There are seated experiences, yes, and the PSVR is more geared toward those than the excluding Vive, but for as many people claiming that room scale VR is the one true way to show off how impressive virtual reality tech is, there are plenty of folks who are automatically disqualified from being so impressed. Then we have to think about people with eye issues or a propensity for migraines, those prone to motion sickness, this is stuff the evangelists just don't fucking think about when they talk about how life-changing and revolutionary VR is. Speaking of which, let's talk space. For the Vive in particular, you're expected to have a lot of space. Again, we're told room-scale VR is the true way to see how impressive the tech is. I wouldn't know. My office isn't big enough for it. I don't have the space. Very few people I know do. Millions of people, in fact, won't have the space for this shit. Remember how Kinect needed a ton of space to be used effectively? Remember how well Kinect did? Yeah. User friendliness and an ability to be adopted by as many people as possible make successful products. Restricting, excluding experiences? Well, I mean, at the price point they're being flogged at, they might do well as a niche product, but as a mainstream adopted product? <laughs> nah, mate. Nah. Basically, to get the best out of virtual reality, to truly see what people are talking about, you need a lot of money, you need to be free of many common physical ailments, and you need to have a big place. You need to be the well-off, oblivious tech bloggers who are busy telling everybody how badly they need this shit. In fact, let's just go right ahead and call virtual reality headsets exactly what they are. They're privilege goggles. Now that we've talked about the biggest barriers to entry that do a fine job of filtering out millions of potential customers, let's talk about the fact that VR itself is a convoluted fucking mess right now in terms of both its market position and as a physical product. At market we have three major headsets, not to mention a whole bunch of smaller mobile contenders. There are exclusive games among them, and then there are exclusives within exclusives, since some games require room scale space and some don't, some require specific controls and some don't. You can't just download and play these games like normal, you need to know if you've got the prereqs or if the game is something you're excluded from, and I expect things like the recent Resident Evil 7 timed VR exclusivity on PS4 
war to be the start of the next wave of exclusivity bidding wars as hardware manufacturers try to undercut each other at the expense of the general public. And in terms of physical systems, I mean, Jesus, just look at the HTC Vive, look at this hideous thing, this thing that requires sensors strewn about your room, that's a complete fucking hassle to set up, and even when it is set up gives you all sorts of fucking bullshit problems and whines about not being seen by the sensors or fails to interact with the Steam VR application and has thick unyielding wires trailing everywhere and separate controls with separate firmware updates, the Vive's a pain in the ass and it looks like shit. I'm being a little bit pedantic with my criticisms of the HTC Vive, a little bit needly, a little bit facetious, I get it, but, but I mean seriously look at the thing. Like, this is like the kind of thing you expect to see on the set of a mid-budget 80s sci-fi movie. This is what the 80s thought the future looked like, except it does now, because this is real. All bulk and wires. Like, this would be hanging off of, like, a bad robot costume in the 1980s. What do you think? He's not impressed. Shit's uncomfortable. I can sit and play any given regular game for hours. I can manage VR for 20 minutes maybe, and no, it's not just because I'm fat, haha, great joke, 10 out of 10. Even sat down, I don't like having a bulky sweat box strapped to my face. And you know me, I love having things strapped to my face normally. The PSVR is the most comfortable headset, that's the unanimous opinion. And even then, as comfy as it is, it isn't something I want clamped around my skull for extended periods of time. It's a strain on the eyes, it's disorienting. And if you find a game that uses a traditional controller rather than some gimmicky on rails shit, there's a good chance you'll want to puke as your body tries and fails to handle the dissonance. And that brings us to my biggest problem with VR right now, a problem that I had with both motion control and 3D before it. Simply put, VR is not yet proving that it can make games better. It can make them more immersive, sure, but mechanically better? Right now we're just seeing a repeat of motion control, thanks in part to the fact that VR has itself heralded the surreptitious return of motion controllers to begin with, which, outside of the Wii, all fucking failed. Probably because they were all desperately copying the Wii. As a result, history is repeating itself with a game library that so far consists primarily of gimmicky tech demos and interactions that are needlessly complex compared to just pushing a fucking button. Like, sure, it's cute to have a game where you physically reload a gun by grabbing a clip with one controller and ramming it near the other controller to put it in the gun. But in normal games, you just press a button. Just press the reload button. You know, if you want to reload the gun, just find the, the button that's for reloading and just press it, and then you reload the gun, because that's convenient. You know, it puts you back into the actual gameplay, rather than you picking up a clip and putting it in. You just press a button. Right, just, just press the reload button. Just press a fucking button. Just like before, we're looking at a glut of tech demos for tech that's already been demonstrated. Vapid experiences that draw out interactions and make them less convenient to perform than using regular controls and just pressing the buttons that make the shit work. We're already staring across at on rails experiences with restricted interactivity because for all the praise these privileged goggles get, they offer more problems than opportunities. There's so much for a developer to actually figure out before the game's being made. How are we going to let the player move around without them barfing everywhere? How are we going to implement motion control since they're back now? How are we going to justify this game being in VR and not just a regular fucking video game? Why are we doing any of this again? When you have to hobble your game to fit the experience rather than create an experience from your game, you're doing shit the wrong way round. And that's always been my biggest issue whenever some new wave of the future tech rolls around. They put demoing the tech first and making the game second. The results are less intuitive, less convenient, less fun experiences. Very few games I've played are actually able to demonstrate that they're better as a result of the VR, and they wouldn't be superior if they'd just been built as traditional experiences instead. And even the VR games I like, and sure, yeah, I, I'd like a couple, I really like a couple, I can only turn my head around and be amazed that the world exists behind me so many times before I properly get over it. And what happens when I get over that sense of wonder? All this shit will likely end up in the corner with my Kinect and my fucking gamepad. As an elevator pitch, virtual reality sounds like a fertile flatbed for unlimited possibilities, but when you look at the games built primarily for VR, you start to realise just how limited it actually is, and it amounts to more or less the same bullshit we saw six years ago when Sony and Microsoft were desperately trying to convince us the Move and Kinect were worth a shit. It's so very fitting, in fact, that PSVR uses the resurrected corpses of Move controllers, an apt reminder of VR's roots and probable future.
Ultimately, for all the hype and drooling over the big VR machines, the most consistently convenient and accessible VR experience has come from mobile offerings like Cardboard, Gear, and presumably Daydream. Simpler, yes, but cheaper, easier to use, less of a mess, and the phones they attach to already trade in smaller, less intricate games, so you don't feel like anything was sacrificed in the process of making them. Plus, it's way easier to get porn for that shit, and that's an incredibly crucial point. After spending the last few minutes shitting all over the virtual reality, you may think I hate it. I don't. Well, I despise the HTC Vive, but I don't hate VR as a concept. I have had fun with games like Until Dawn Rush of Blood and a couple of other PSVR games I can't yet talk about, but a common thread running through the games I've enjoyed most is that they'd mechanically work just as well if the VR wasn't part of them. Rush of Blood works as a silly arcade light gun shooter. R works as a multiplayer co game. And again, this is the same situation we had over half a decade ago with motion control that the game industry refuses to learn its lesson over. Make the good game first, worry about the gimmicky accoutrement afterwards, and if it turns out your game works better without the gimmicks, don't fucking use them! There is fun to be had with virtual reality. I fully, happily, cheerily admit it. But with so many barriers to entry and so many problems getting in the way of the experience, so many hindrances put between the player and the game, it's long term worth is something I feel has been vastly overestimated by the zealous cult that's grown up around the technology. There's no predicting the future, but despite what the old saying says, past events can be a pretty good indicator of future performance. And if past experience has taught me anything about these cult breeding innovations in tech, it's taught me that the more people scream about something being the future, the more likely it is to become ancient history. It is okay to want to make it fuck with Paul. Uh, 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 uh. Folks, we have a lot of fun on the Jimquisition, don't we? Um, funnily enough, after I edited the main thrust of this video, I went to go and play some more uh, VR stuff, because I'm reviewing VR games for thegymquisition.com. Don't know if you heard of it, and it was just very fitting that after 10 minutes of playing the game in question that I can't talk about just yet, but will be reviewing this week, I had to go and have a lie down, because after just 10 minutes of playing, I felt incredibly wretchedly sick so that's just it was it was just a nice little reminder that I'm on the right track with what I'm talking about today and I am fully on the right track because well have you not been paying attention this is the Jimquisition it's the only track to be on unless you're playing VR in which case there's a lot of rails that you can be on thank God for me That'll wake the wife up. Over here, I'm a boglin. Me and my buddy. <laughs> My HTC Vive and its fucking wires knocked my Silent Hill nurse figure off the podium while I was talking about it. And this was a gift from a watcher of the show and it fell and I didn't realize it fell and I stepped on it and broke the stand. So that's another thing VR's taken from me. Anyway, time for some fuck Konami news, all the news that's fit to make you say fuck Konami. Don't worry about Boglin, watch it, it's got its own show now. You don't have to be terrified it might show up after the credits of the show. So, fuck Konami news, let's talk about that, shall we? What you're looking at here is the new Castlevania slot machine. Happy 30th anniversary, Castlevania. This was uh, taken at the Global Gaming Expo by a fan who wishes to remain anonymous, understandably. And yeah, if what we're looking at here is the genuine article, it looks shit. I mean it does. <laughs> Why yes, today's update is petty. It's not exactly particularly outrageous, we already know that Konami loves to turn its properties into uh, big glorified gambling cash cows, but I just thought it was interesting, just interesting to have a look at this shitty slot machine that looks bog standard and horrible and you can just about tell is related to Castlevania. I had to squint for a while until I saw the logo and said, all oh, right, yeah, 
yeah, that is Castlevania, I suppose. But, you know, I'm pursuing petty grudges here, so it's okay! Fuck Konami! That's it.